So my name is uh, Gabriel, and I'm going to, pref uh, to present about uh, low fiber content, PVA ECC for transportation infrastructure. So um, uh, why we're, we're, we're working in this topic? Uh, first of all, uh, concrete is, is a phenomenal material. We have been using it uh, for so many years because of the cost effectiveness and the great mechanical properties that it has. However, uh, we know that concrete also has weaknesses. What are the weaknesses of concrete? Uh, mainly brittleness, so concrete will crack, as well as low tensile strength. So, so the, the, the lack of ductility with, combined with the low tensile strength allow for, for uh, cracks to be generated. And what is the problem for pavement when you have cracks? Well, water and, uh, can you know, go through your uh, pavement and eventually can damage your base, sub-base, and, and you can have very bad problems like, like the one this picture is showing right here. Uh, in addition, uh, because of the lack of, of ductility of concrete, you, you, you require joints. Uh, and joints are usually one of the main uh, deterioration mechanisms in pavement. Uh, you can have uh, joint faulting, joint spalling, corner breaks, because again, corners are associated to joints. So this costs a lot uh, in, in repair. So uh, we, we think one solution for this is implementing ductile cementitious composites like ECC, for transportation infrastructure. Um, this is a, a very quick example of what is the difference between ECC and traditional concrete. So ECC, as you can see right here, this is a direct tensile test. And this is the, the setup that you, we use in our laboratory. So uh, typical concrete will uh, go in uh, the stress you know, really up really quickly, quickly in tension. And then you'll have a sudden uh, crack generation, right? And, and a sudden drop of load with that. So uh, as soon as you have a crack in concrete, you lose all load carrying capacity. However, with ECC materials, you actually have that first crack, and then you have what is called a strain hardening phenomenon. That means with further strain, further rep deformation, you have an increasing load carrying capacity, and that uh, is a process that, that, that takes place with the formation of multiple crackings, as you can see in this figure right here a bunch of multiple cracks uh, until final failure, that you have a similar failure like concrete, one single crack opens and finally you have a uh, complete uh, collapse of, of, of your material. So how much ductility you have with these materials in contrast to traditional concrete is around 100 to 500 times more deformation capacity. So it's, it's, it's huge. Um, furthermore, uh, these tensile properties translate also into the flexural performance of these materials. So these are, again, tests that we have run in, in, in the laboratories at, at, at LSU. Uh, and as you can see right here, this is a typical ASTM 1609 test. And this uh, is a comparison between typical concrete at uh, four point, around 4.5 megapascal is the modulus of rupture. Concrete will uh, crack and the beam will suddenly collapse, right? Losing all of the current capacity. With typical fire reinforced concrete, you will have, again, the peak, and then you'll have a residual strength. That's the, the blue line that you're looking right, that, right there. That's the fire reinforced concrete. And ECC will have uh, the, the, the first peak load, and then you will have this very nice uh, increase in strength with uh, further deformation. What are the implications of this? Well, uh, uh, the first and most important thing, you have a much uh, higher modulus of rupture you're talking about two to three times that of typical concrete. Furthermore, the area under this curve is the, the energy of the formation, which has been related to uh, increasing load carrying capacity of labs on ground. Uh, so there are many benefits uh, potentially for the design of pavement with this uh, type of materials. This is a very quick, uh, I was talking about the energy uh, uh, under the curve. So usually this, this ratio uh, is being used, which is an equivalent flexural strength ratio. What is this? This is the uh, stress versus deformation curve. So, they, uh, so the approach is you uh, obtain a rectangle that it has exactly the same area that the area under the curve, and you uh, get that stress equivalent uh, right there to the same area uh, of, of the area under the curve with the rectangle, which is your equivalent flexural uh, strength. And, with, and that you divide it by the modulus of rupture of uh, your material, so the peak strength. And with that, you get uh, what is called the equivalent flexural strength ratio, which is a measure of your flexural performance and, and toughness in the, in the formation capacity. So wh why I say, I say this? Because this ratio has been proposed by, by some uh, uh, authors, uh, researchers, uh, for, uh, to increase, uh, you can actually increase, modify the, 
the modules of Raptor you're using for pavement design uh, by using this factor that you see right here, modules of Raptor is equals one plus the ratio of the equivalent flexural strength ratio over 100. This is usually used just for traditional fiber in forced concrete, so uh, these ratios should be in between 30 to 60 percent. However, with ECC, you have uh, up to uh, 150 and 200. While this is not directly ap applicable, it gives you a, an idea of, of how good these materials could be for pavement design. Um, furthermore, ECC has great durability. Why? Because the cracks that are formed in ECC, in contrast to traditional concrete, are really tiny, usually less than 60 micrometers. And in the literature, uh, it, it is usually referred as a, a threshold of 100 micrometers. So cracks smaller than 100 micrometers usually do not cause uh, severe uh, deterioration in, in, in concrete structures. So uh, actually uh, performance against freeze and thaw, alkali silica reaction, sulfate attack, and even corrosion has been uh, demonstrated to, through testing that, that ECC has a, ger a great potential against these, these attacks. In addition, uh, since the cracks are so tiny in ECC, uh, ECC is also self-healing uh, because of the tiny cracks allow for the autogenous healing mechanisms of uh, cementitious materials to take place and actually heal these, these tiny cracks. So it's, it's, it's a very exciting uh, material for, for pavement application. So what are the implications of all these properties that I just uh, introduced? The implications of these properties are that, uh, first of all, pavement thickness could be reduced uh, by more than 50%, so a factor of two, which is uh, remarkable. In addition, uh, the possibility for jointless concrete pavements is, 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 is real with these type of materials because of the amazing ductility. Uh, again, intense tensile ductility is about 100 to 500 times that of typical concrete. In addition, uh, it will provide for more resilient and durable transportation infrastructure. Why? Because of uh, what I uh, said before of the great uh, resistance that this material has against uh, major deterioration mechanisms like freeze thaw. Uh, and others, uh, and in addition that it is a self-healing material. Um, now, what is the problem with ECC right now? Um, well, it, it emerged as a solution for the, the weaknesses of concrete. ECC has a, an initial cost right now uh, of about two to three times that of concrete. So by why uh, maybe you can reduce, uh, it's very likely that you can have a factor of two reduction in thickness. If your cost is more than two times that of concrete, maybe the economics are not there. For this reason, uh, we, one of the main objectives of our project is lower the cost of this material. Uh, and the main cost drivers for ECC are the PVA fiber, which usually is used at 2% uh, volume fraction, and also the utilization of micro silica sand, so very fine sand. Uh, so again, the objectives of our project was to reduce, uh, to uh, produce ECC with local ingredients so that they are more cost effective. Replace the micro silica sand with a local sand. We are using a fine river sand, which is much more uh, economical. Uh, and try to reduce a fiber uh, s without affecting uh, significantly the properties of the material. So we are using, instead of the 2% volume fraction, we're using 1.75% volume fraction. In addition, we're trying to, to replace cement uh, by high quantities with fly ash so that uh, we, can, we can reduce the cost. Um, a very quick introduction about uh, ECC design criteria, and, and this is important to, to, to uh, uh, know why we are uh, doing some, some, some things that we're doing uh, right here. So there's two main criteria for this ductility to take place. Uh, the, the first criteria is the, the strength criteria, which basically says that uh, the, the maximum fiber bridging capacity has to be uh, greater than the, the first cracking strength of the material, and, and that is a very uh, intuitive thing. Uh, why? Because uh, when the uh, if, the, if the first crack in strength is greater than, than the fire bridging capacity, then as soon as your first crack generates, then your material will collapse. So this is uh, very uh, easy to, to understand. And the second criteria is the energy criteria, which basically is a criteria that guarantees the steady state multiple cracking mechanism of ECC materials. And this is a consequence of a, a J integral uh, analysis. Uh, and basically says that the JB, which is the complementary energy of the fire bridging relation, has to be has to be greater than J tip, which is the uh, crack tip matrix softness, which basically is the energy that you require for a crack to further uh, propagate in the cementitious matrix. Uh, and with these equations, you can simply uh, equate these indexes that are the 
uh, pseudo strain hardening strength index. It is called pseudo strain hardening uh, index because that's how the mechanism of of the of the uh, dog child deformation ECC is called. So you have two indexes that have to be met: the pseudo strain hardening strength index, which is the, the sigma sub zero, the maximum fire bridging capacity divided by the cracking strength, has to be greater than one, and as well the pseudo strain hardening energy index, which means that the JB, which is the complementary energy, the fire bridging relation divided by the crack tip matrix toughness has to be greater than one. That is theoretically. However, in practice, uh, researchers have shown that these values should be around, that's why I have in, uh, these two 1.45 value for the strength index and three for energy index. That actually has correlated to really strong and robust properties of the ECC materials. And from these four, uh, from these indexes, the, the values that generate these indexes, which are sigma CR, J tip, sigma sub zero, and JB, uh, right, uh, but sigma CR and J tip are controlled mainly by the cementitious matrix. That is, uh, the type, uh, the amount of uh, the water to cement ratio, uh, what type of cementitious materials you're using, uh, as well as the type of, of, of aggregate. And sigma sub zero and JB uh, are controlled by the fiber bridging relation, which is mainly uh, affected by the fiber and by the interface between the fiber and the cementitious uh, matrix. This is the, the fire bridging relation that I was speaking uh, about. Basically, you have two pieces. Once you have the crack, you have the two pieces of cementitious matrix bonded together with the, with the fibers. And as you can see right here, this is the, the, the curve that, that basically uh, explains the behavior. As you are pulling apart these, these uh, two pieces, right? You have a stress and you have a, deforma a, a deformation, which accounts for the pullout mechanism of the fiber as well as the elastic deformation. And JV, which I was talking about, is the left-hand uh, part of the curve. So that's the complementary energy. Now, uh, what, we do, what we did was, this is the experimental matrix. So we had three mixes uh, for two different series. Uh, we had a regular ECC series, and we had a crumb rubber ECC series. So we also added crumb rubber to some of the mixes because it helps to uh, reduce the J tip, which is the crack tip toughness, and allowed for uh, better ductility. So uh, basically the three mixes, we increase the content of fly ash from 62% all the way to 75% replacement of cement by weight. Uh, and for the crumb rubber uh, uh, series, we uh, increase from 55% replacement of fly ash until 69% uh, by weight. Also we use two different types of sand locally available. Both are river sand but one was coarser than, than, than the other and, and cheaper as well. So this is how we prepare the material in the lab. Here are the materials, the PVA fiber, the river sand, fly ash, cement, and here's the, the student uh, mixing the, the material in the lab. And the ECC looks uh, like uh, a concrete, traditional concrete, it can be self-consolidated, self and it's a little bit viscous. So the experimental results. In terms of compressive strength, uh, we had, a, and this is expected, uh, as you can see, M1.6, M2.2, and M3.0, that is the, the ratio between cement, uh, between fly ash to cement. That means uh, it's increasing contents of fly ash uh, each uh, column. So with increased, increased contents of fly ash, you see a decrease in strength for both coarse and fine, and fine sand uh, uh, materials, which is, is, is expected. The same thing uh, you see for the crumb rubber series. However, the strengths with the crumb rubber, we had some, some problems with that because the compressive strengths were, were too low. You can see the contrast with the regular ECC. However, for regular ECC, uh, M1.6 and M2.2, both of those mixes at 28 days had the compressive strength or of traditional, con of, of regular concrete or more. So that, that was good. In, term, in terms of flexural performance, uh, again, we see a similar uh, effect. As we increase the fly ash content, the flexural strength of the material decreases. However, uh, you will see in the next slide that while you're sacrificing strength when you add fly ash, actually you enhance the ductility, which, which is very interesting. And as well, in the crop, crop rubber series, while it's less uh, visible, the effect, uh, especially with fine sand, there's a tendency for, for the um, strength to decrease while, while you're increasing fly ash, especially for the coarse sand 
the fine sand was really not, not a big difference in between the, 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 the different uh, specimens tested. Uh, in terms of deformation, as, as I was speaking uh, before, you see this increased trend in deformation capacity with the increase in fly ash. And very similar uh, phenomena you can see in the, in the crump rubber series. However, for the crump rubber series, you can see that compared to regular ECCs, the, the deformation capacity is, is, is much greater. Uh, finally, the, the uh, flexural, equivalent flexural uh, strength ratio, we, we also equate that. And you can see, again, a similar tre ascending trend. With fly ash, you get a better uh, equivalent flexural strength ratio. Uh, and with uh, typical with crump rubber, is, is uh, less uh, visible, this trend. So uh, the conclusions of, of the testing we have done. Uh, first of all, PVA CC materials with low, relatively low fiber content and local ingredients uh, were successfully developed. Uh, a trade-off between ductility and strength uh, were observed. This was true for compressive strength and flexural strength. Uh, in addition, uh, we have mixed design uh, that it's, uh, we think is a, is a very good, uh, has a very good performance, which is M2.2. And this mix with core sand, it has uh, a 28 days a compressive strength of 31.3 megapascal, which is greater than normal concrete. It has a modulus of rupture of 10.4 megapascal, which is two times more than that of regular concrete. And it has an equivalent flexural strength ratio of 150% which is much bigger than typical fiber reinforced concrete, about three to four times. And this material cost more than two times out of concrete. So this is, this is really, really interesting. I'm sorry, less than two times out of concrete. Uh, finally, the properties of, uh, an, an additional conclu conclusion is that the properties of, of uh, low fiber content uh, PBACC should be evaluated at later ages than 28 days since we have a lot of uh, fly ash material. These materials can uh, gain much strength uh, later than 28 days. And we have to confirm whether the ductility will be retained. Uh, however, we, we believe it, it, it will have significant ductility uh, much longer on, um, without any, any, any inconvenience. Um, and also a trade-off between ductility and strength was also observed for the crumb rubber addition. So when you add crumb rubber on it, these are these uh, defects that you're introducing into the cementitious matrix allow for a, for a more multiple crackings and more deformation. However, you, you compensate that by losing some strength. So uh, for future research, we should address this uh, problem by exploring different contents of, of uh, replacement of cr crump rubber, um, as well as, as different type and gradation of, of the crump rubber. So I would like to acknowledge uh, Transit for funding uh, our project, and also LTRC for all the, the for the funding and for all the help that they have provided. So uh, thank you very much.